Okay, well, can we please use the mic for questions? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> this first. Hi, Ange. Um, I'm just wondering what the squad's looking like, what the mood is going into tomorrow? Um, yeah, squad-wise, um, uh, from the weekend, just uh, Cameron Cardovic has uh, pulled up a bit sore after the game on uh, Sunday or so whenever it was. Um, yeah, the artificial pitch wasn't great for him, so we've left him at home. Um, everyone else apart from uh, Callum, obviously, is out. Uh, is fit and available, and um, yeah, we're we'll looking forward to it. You've <clears> seen <throat> enough in the, the game against Madrid and Glasgow to give you some confidence that you can get something here tomorrow. Well, I think you know the, the whole Champions League campaign for us has um, you know has been a, a great sort of um, you know process in us understanding you know what we can bring to these games and and you know the areas we keep we need to keep improving. I think. Uh, in every game, we've had our moments, and, and when we've had our moments, we haven't taken them. But most of the time, that's come when we've played our football. And, um, you know, we also know that when the opposition have their moments at this level, they can punish you. And, um, you know, I think this whole sort of campaign for us has been one where, you know, we understand exactly sort of the areas that, you know, we can make an impact, but also the areas where, you know, we have to be wary of. In general, having spoken to a number of the fans in the city today, what a lot of them said was, look, we've really enjoyed the campaign. We think we've seen enough to give us hope uh, going into to next year. I wonder for clubs like Celtic, though, how they can, if possible, try to cut that gap between clubs like yourselves and these so-called super clubs. Yeah, I think the first part of it is, you know, like you said, to, to make sure we're here next year. Um, you know, what we can't do as a club our size is sort of qualify for this tournament every three or four years or five years I think you can't really gain any traction or make any sort of progress <clears throat> with that sort of absence because part of competing at this level is just the experience of competing at I mean, we've seen it you know even with a you know a club like Shakhtar <clears throat> you know they've consistently been in Champions League so their players are exposed to it year in year out and you know for our, our players most of them um, this is their first sort of you know, understanding of what it takes to play at this level. Now, <clears throat> for us to make progress, and it's not going to be massive progress, but I think you can chip away at it. I really believe that. I think, and you've seen it with other clubs at different times. Um, and with clubs our size, I think it's a matter of being consistently playing at this level, sort of having a real kind of belief in, in your football. And I think eventually what happens is you, you kind of hit a sweet spot where things go your way and you do need things to go your way. Um, and you know your football's good and there's real belief in the group and experience and and you know in any given year you can make an impact but i don't think it's a linear thing i don't think every year you improve you get close enough for a club like ours it's just you've got to be in there every year knocking on the door and and eventually you'll get you know you'll get the response you want Hola, Mister. Guillermo Díaz de la cadena cope eh, más de 10.000 aficionados han venido a la ciudad para ver este partido esperaba ese eh, apoyo por parte de los aficionados del Celtic y qué significa para su club un partido como este contra el Real Madrid en el Santiago Bernabéu. Yeah, no, look, um, in terms of our supporters, they've been outstanding um, this whole campaign and, and you know, they, they've supported us um, home and away. Everyone talks about the atmosphere at Celtic Park and European nights, but our support away from home in Europe is um, something we're really proud of as well. They, they get behind us. And, and I think for everyone at the football club, they've really been looking forward to this game. Um, there's history between you know, Celtic and Real. Um, Di Stefano's testimonial was between the two clubs. We haven't played you know, since then. So you know, for everyone at our club, we're very proud to, to again be here at the Bernabeu playing against you know, one of the world's greatest teams. And, and hopefully tomorrow night is, is a game that, you know, um, will be memorable for, for everyone, including our supporters. Hola, ¿qué tal? Paula Castillo para Real Madrid Televisión. Como acabas de decir, tenéis una gran afición. También me gustaría saber qué esperáis del ambiente aquí en el Estadio Santiago Bernabéu y de los aficionados del Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah a, a great atmosphere. Um, it's one of the you know, iconic stadiums in the world. Um, as I said, um, yeah, I think even if you ask the Real Madrid players, um, 
they'll tell you about the atmosphere that we create at Celtic Park. It's always a memorable game and, and, and you know, it's always a, a great experience. And, and we're looking forward to it um, for our club as well. As I said, we haven't played against Real for a very long time. Um, so, you know, for our football club, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're looking forward to the experience. More importantly, we want to make sure that we, um, you know, we, we give our, our, our supporters and our fans something to be proud of. Hola, entrenador. Aquí, Carlos Vicente de Radio Marca. Yo quería saber si usted me puede comentar la postura de su club y la suya personal en torno a una futura e hipotética Superliga de clubes que sustituya la competición que ustedes mañana van a jugar aquí en el Bernabéu. Yeah, look, I think that's something that, um, from my perspective as a football manager, is not something I'm focused on. I think what, what is important is to always remember that part of the beauty of this competition is that um, you know you want every club who is champion or who qualifies to be able to have an opportunity to win it. We've won a European Cup. You know this football club has. That only happened because you know it was open for all clubs to to play in and participate in. I think that's important. That's my view anyway. Thank you. ¿Qué tal, Chechu Parraga del Chiringuito? En la gala del Balón de Oro, France Football eligió al Real Madrid como el tercer mejor club del año pasado. Eh, no sé qué le parece a usted. ¿Le parece justo? Eh, ¿Le colocaría en ese tercer puesto o le pondría más, un poco más adelante? Gracias. That's not for me to assess. So I'm, I'm here as manager of, of Celtic and, and we're playing against the team that won the Champions League last year. They're a fantastic team. What we analyse, what we do is who we're going to play tomorrow. That's all we're focused on. And we know it's going to be a tough game. We're looking forward to it. We want to test ourselves against the best. And I think, uh, I don't think anyone would argue that uh, Real Madrid is amongst the best, play best clubs in the world. Thank you. And you've uh, mentioned time and again that uh, you want Celtic to be regularly in this tournament. How much... Has this whetted your appetite to try and prove yourself as a manager and the excitement of this tournament? I don't have to prove myself as a manager. I, 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 I do this because I think this football club deserves to be at this level. And, and what this year's you know, given me the motivation and appetite is to make sure that we're here every year and, and, and make an impact because I think that's where the, the football club deserves to be. You know, you know yourself, you know, we get 60,000 at every game. You know, we, we're... We've got an unbelievable stadium with that creates the most unique of um, you know um, atmospheres, and a club of our size um, deserves to be playing at this level. So that's where the motivation lies, and and I want our football club, this football club, to make an impact. It's not about me. Um, I don't need to prove myself to anybody or anyone. I'm quite comfortable in in the kind of manager I am, but I also know that I have a responsibility, you know, with this football club to make sure that it. it takes its rightful place amongst the best football clubs in the world. What have, what have you learned as, as a manager from this Champions League experience? Nothing I didn't know. It's a tough competition. It's, um, you know, it's a competition where it's relentless and unforgiving, um, but we knew that going into it. The key for us was how we we're going to measure where we were with that. And like I said, you can go out there and sort of fight for your survival and fear the consequences or you can be brave and, and try and really test yourself and that's I think what we've done. And that's given me then the ability to see the areas we've come short in, the areas we need to keep improving and I think that's the key for us. It's not it's not about um, just about the outcomes. Obviously that's what you get measured on, <coughs> the results, but for me it's, it's well okay if we want to be a football club that makes an impact, what are the areas we need to improve? in in the areas we need to keep chipping away at and as I said I think in every game we've we've really sort of measured ourselves against the best by playing our football um, so for me the learnings are in the fact that we've been able to to stick true to who we want to be as a club and not sort of react or, or sort of fear as I said consequences of, of results because of the the level of competition we're at. Japan World Cup squad was released today. Dyson is in it. Kyogo and Rio aren't. Do you feel for those two a bit, just given how well they've performed for Celtic since they joined the club? Yeah, obviously I do because, you know, again, World Cup is, you know, for any footballer, I mean, I was fortunate enough to, to obviously you know, be a manager at a football, at a, at a World Cup. It's it's one of those tournaments where I'm sure that, um, you know, for every football, club, football player, um, it's a dream of theirs to, to get there and, 
I think they both you know, would have been very close to getting in, particularly Kyogo, um, and you know, disappointed for them because um, you know the Rio's probably got another maybe one or two cycles of World Cups to to potentially go to. But with Kyogo, you know, at his age, I think he's still got one in him because he's still I still think he's young. But um, you know, you, you want to take these opportunities. So disappointed for them, but <clears throat> you know, both of them are really strong characters. I know that you know they'll. They'll, they'll take it in the right way and, and it'll motivate them to make sure that, you know, they continue to, to play their football to the best of their ability at our football club and, and these opportunities will come again. It's also been linked with UK Kobayashi for a potential move in January. Is there anything you can tell us on that? And is the Japanese market something you'll be looking at again in January? Yeah, we've gone early on the January market, haven't we? It's just into November, so I've got a lot of talking about that. Uh, look, as I've said before, we're... We've got a strategy in place which we're, you know, which I'm really, <coughs> you know, comfortable with in terms of making sure that we're always looking to improve our squad, looking to, you know, improve the way we do things. You know, we take away, you know, the experiences we've had at Champions League level, at domestic level, and how can we be better? And every window gives you that opportunity. So, you know, we, we've had some plans in place for, for January for a while now, and, you know, hopefully over the sort of next. Uh, you know, a few weeks we'll be able to sort of conclude some of that and you know, the whole idea is to make um, you know, this squad stronger for, for the second half of the year and beyond. Okay, one more question, please. <clears throat> Hola, aquí Manuel de Juan para el Diario As. Um, le quería preguntar, el Real Madrid viene de dos pinchados consecutivos, que no es una cosa eh, demasiado frecuente y esto puede ser un arma de doble filo. ¿Puede ser el momento para meterle mano a un equipo como el Madrid o también pueden venir, eh, digamos, con ganas de reivindicarse? No, no sé cómo lo ve esto. Yeah, I, I don't think you ever expect to play Real Madrid and it's not going to be a difficult game. I don't think um, their recent results are, you know, are really relevant to that. I think when you come here at the Bernabeu and play against them, you know it's going to be a tough game. And we're expecting a very difficult game tomorrow. They've, they've still got something to play for, obviously, in the Champions League and, and they've got great pride and I'm sure they'll want to, in front of their fans, put on a good performance and get a good result. So, you know, for us... You know, we're expecting them to be at their best and we've got to be at our best to try and, you know, make an impact with that. But, you know, in some respects, that's what you want, you know. Uh, I want to go out there tomorrow with our, with our group of guys and, and, and make sure they they um, go out there and measure themselves against, you know, the very best footballers in the world and one of the best football clubs in the world and, and see how we go. All right. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks.